Uh, hello and um, welcome to Lake Como in Italy. Uh, I'm top rope soloing here and um, before I started getting into the sport I watched a lot of videos on the best setup and I found them really useful so I thought I might uh, show you exactly what, what I do. Um, so start with the gear and then maybe uh, how I rig the gear on the rope and then maybe some tips at the end. So first things first for the, uh, the capture ascent I use um, this guy which is the Climbing Technologies Roll and Lock and, uh, and this guy here which is the Petzl Micro Traction thing. Um, now uh, this one a lot of people use, uh, that I got the idea from videos like this and it seems to work really really well. Yes it has these um, quite sharp teeth inside but I don't find that's any problem with the rope. Uh, and then for a backup, I use this guy. The reason why I didn't get uh, two micro tracks is because, well, firstly, this one's a little bit cheaper, and also it's got other uses. You can um, you can put slings through it and stuff, so it, it's it's a good thing to have on your belt, even if you're not solo. And to attach them to myself, I use um, the rolling lock through this massive carabiner on the on the below loop, and then. I extend my bide loop with this tiny little sling uh, for the micro tracks and I do this because um, for whatever reason it makes me feel more comfortable to have the two devices a little way apart so if you have them together on the bide loop they kind of knock into each other and, I, and I'm worried they might interrupt each other somehow so I have the micro tracks down there out the way and I have the uh, roll and lock on, on this one here Generally speaking, this is how um, the ropes look when they're under tension. So I run, I put a figure of eight in the top of the line, uh, and then I have these two these two lines going all the way down to the bottom. Um, I generally have the, the tension on this guy, because um, he, he doesn't have teeth, so I think it'll be a little bit more kinder on the rope. And then I have the micro traction um, here as a backup. Yeah. Uh, and <clears throat> this one's a bit floppy, but it's really easy just to, you know, to move it up and down the rope. That's no problem. Um, a quick note on the carabiners. I have found you've got to use the right kind of carabiner. Um, this one is good here because it's it's very thin and then thick at the top. I don't know what that's called, but and it's also massive. And what this means is it hasn't really got any opportunity to twist itself or cross load, which I have found is the, an issue with these guys um, in general. This one here is the... Um, Edelred one, which has got this gate that stops it from cross-loading, which I find really good. Particularly this one here with the slack, it's got it's got more of a tendency to cross-load. But <clears throat> ever since I started using this specific carabiner, I've had absolutely no problems at all. Um, you can very much do what you want to do, and it's it's not a problem. While I'm at the top, I'll talk about my anchor setup. So um, I guess the main thing is that I, I always use. Um, I always try and cross load the top anchors. So this one's a bit weird here because that bolt is so much lower than that one, but there are still two bolts. So I set up this sling here um, so is it that the load is shared opposite um, those two the let is showed the let the load is shared across those two bolts. That one and that one, they come down the sling and then into this big carabiner here. This is one of these ones that um automatically locks it's not it's not really necessary but um i like it um i don't use a second carabiner here because it feels like overkill to me um but honestly if i had another one that was exactly the same size as this i probably would a uh, quick note on the line this is a, a normal um dynamic climbing line there's some talk in the forums about using static lines but i don't really understand that um i just use a normal line and it works absolutely fine um, my biggest concern regarding the line is abseiling off the end of it, so before I throw it down, I tie little knots in the end to make sure that I don't, I don't fall off the end. The other thing I should probably note is that neither of these are abseiling devices. Um, I've tried various different things for abseiling, but my preferred method is to um, take this guy off and replace it with a grigri. So I abseil down this line here using a grigri, and then I hold this one open. And, it's, and, and it slides down at the same time. And the idea is that if the grigri fails or if I lose consciousness or something, I will let go and, and, and the micro tracks will do that. I've tried various different things for, um, I've tried various different options for the abseiling, but I find that 
Using the Grigri on this one is the easiest. And when you're soloing, you change a lot. So you want the process of switching from being on belay to abseil to be as smooth as possible because there's lots of steps. You're quite likely to make mistakes. So I, I, that, that's what I use. I carry the Grigri on my belt here and, and it works pretty well. Right, so here I am on belay. It's quite difficult to film and do it at the same time, but you can see that I have uh, all the tension on this line going into the belay, which is on the big carabiner going right into the belay loop. And then for the backup, I have this one here. And what I do is I hold the catch on the microtracks and open with that, and then I kind of have the 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 dead rope on the grigri in my right hand. So I kind of feed the grigri with my right hand on this while also holding that. And the idea is if everything goes wrong, I just let go and this guy will, will grab. Now, the principal reason why I like this Grigri, I think I said it before, the reason I like abseiling with this Grigri is that because when it comes to change over time, I never have to take this off. Um, if you use an abseiling device like an ATC, you have to sling in and then take your gear off and then re come back on to belay, which I think feels sketchy to me. This way, when I want to come off, I put the tension on this one here, like this. Hang on. I put the tension on there. I put the slack on the Grigri, like that. And now I can change this device out for my roll and lock, and this thing never leaves the rope, which means at no point am I ever having to take this off. I put this on when I begin climbing, and I take it off when I finish climbing, which means I think the opportunity for me to put it on wrong at any point and then fall off and die is, uh, is limited, which for me sounds like a good thing. Okay, I will quickly go through some of the things that I've learned, some tips which I think will benefit anyone that's wanting to do this. Um, and the first two are to do with the rope. Firstly, when you're using this kind of setup, you want to keep your rope between your legs. So when you're climbing up, the rope should be between your legs. If you find yourself with your rope going over the side of your legs, down like that, uh, it's the capture ascent devices clattered together and it feels unsafe. The second thing about your rope is you need to be aware that because the rope is not moving through the carabiner at the top, you have the same bit of rope rubbing over the same bit of rock constantly. So you need to be sure that if you are climbing on a convex slope, convex rock, that you are aware of that and protecting your rope if necessary. Uh, the third thing that I do is I take a lot of slings and a lot of quick draws with me. I find them to be incredibly useful. I never regret having them with me. The first time I did this, I thought I was top roping so I wouldn't need any quick draws and I regretted that. And mostly I just use them for attaching either myself to the rock, some gear to myself or my gear to the rock, ultimately. Uh, the quick draws are great for that. And my final and most important tip is to climb easy. When I started doing this, I was climbing my normal grade uh, and I just found it incredibly scary and quite stressful. That added risk of hurting yourself when no one there is, when no one is there is to help you just added a, a certain something to the climb that I just didn't feel, you know, and it just wasn't enjoyable. So now when I come and do this, I take it real easy. I climb several grades beneath my ability and it's really just about the fresh air and the great outdoors and all that rather than bettering myself or improving my technique. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, let me know if you've got any questions and stay safe. Cheers.